Hello, I'm Greg Robinson, Bemis Chief Curator, and I'm here to give you an introduction to Kurt Solmsen's solo exhibition, Kurt Solmsen, The Yellow Boat. This exhibition includes over 30 paintings done over 30 years, primarily from where he lives in Vaughan, Washington. This exhibition has two primary entrances. One is at the top of the grand staircase, where we've decided to show just a sample of the kinds of work you'll see in the main Rachel Pfefferman gallery. We include a couple paintings of different styles, some studies, more of which you will see in the show, and also two smaller yellow boat paintings. Of course, the title of the exhibition is Kurt Solmsen, The Yellow Boat. The other entrance is if you're coming off the elevator, directly ahead of you, you will see R.G. and the Yellow Boat, one of Solmsen's largest paintings in the exhibition featuring a yellow boat, a view from upstairs in his house, and a very interesting angle and perspective with his brother featured in this painting. Amy Sawyer, Bima's associate curator and I, have had a lot of fun working with Kurt curating this exhibition. Of course, we had many more paintings to choose from, and there are always hard decisions to make, including how easy is it to borrow something from a collection, what are some efficiencies we could have, how to make the exhibition cost-effective. So we decided to focus on collections in primarily Washington State and Oregon, and we're grateful to have work by many private collections and one painting also from the Tacoma Art Museum. In organizing this show, we had to think about the series of works. These are not chronological series where he starts one and stops, say, 10 years later, and then starts another series. So we decided to organize the exhibition by theme. As you come into the Rachel Pfefferman Gallery, you see a number of works that focus on exterior scenes and some featuring architectural elements that are common, such as porches and interiors of homes and landscape paintings. A number of paintings also featuring Kurt and his family in exterior scenes. There are a number of what I call interior views, interior domestic paintings, such as his family members sleeping in bed, or you'll see his dining room. These tend to be larger paintings, and we thought we would display them in a makeshift interior room using our movable walls. Solmsen also works more abstractly, and we've really enjoyed being able to both show and discuss those works. And then there's an entirely new and different series of winter scenes. And again, these weren't done in one chronological period, but over the course of several years. This particular series of winter paintings ranges in size. It includes one of his largest diptychs that's in the show. Many of our members and visitors are familiar with Labor Day, one of the paintings that has graced Bema several times in our lobby since we opened the doors in summer 2013. This particular piece, as well as others, are in our founder's collection, the collection of Cynthia Sears, and this is partly how I, as chief curator, came to know Kurt Solmsen. Paintings in this show are focused on the work I've done in and around Vaughan, Washington, where I've lived for about 32 years. I've been painting for about 40 years. The city where I grew up, Philadelphia, and the school that I went to, the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts, has a long tradition of figurative painting. Thomas Aikens taught at the school, so I was surrounded by a collection of great paintings and I was very influenced by the Pennsylvania painters. In 1982, I bought a small pickup truck and uh, went out landscape painting, and the biggest canvas that I could fit into the truck was 50 by 70 inches, so that became a, a common format for me. I painted in the area, the, the Key Peninsula, and I would drive around like I did in Pennsylvania looking for landscapes to paint and sort of like a hunter-gatherer going out, finding a place to paint and bringing the paintings back. And then I saw that 
this house that we lived on on the shore of the sound there was a lot of subject matter right there so i started doing these domestic landscapes i would see something either inside the house or outside the house looking from certain angles and i would paint that so they were sort of domestic landscapes i like to keep the narratives in these paintings general not too specific a narrative i've done a lot of paintings with the yellow boat in it. Uh, my grandfather bought that yellow boat in 1935 in the port of Tacoma. There was a company that built one of those a day, nailed together from cedar planks with oak rails. And he rode the boat from the port of Tacoma to his house on Maury Island. And that boat's been in our family ever since. Uh, it was originally varnished at one point. It was lost in a fog. So from that point on, they painted it bright yellow, so it would be easy to find in a fog. So when I started painting the first summer after art school, the first year, I came out to Vaughan and I started painting and I realized that that bright yellow, cadmium yellow color in the blue and green northwest landscape was a, a nice point of color and I liked the, the man-made curves of the boat and also the boat uh, was important to me, my family history. So I started using the boat in paintings early on. And so there have been a series of paintings, some looking down from above. There was a, a time when I, I looked down from the porch of my mother's house and it was late summer. The sun was sparkling off the water and I saw my brother, R.G., sitting on the steps and the boat was floating near him. It was a very dramatic image. I was very excited by it. So I went back to my studio and I took a big 50 by 70 landscape uh, that had a big blue sky and a yellow house and a field of grass, very static. Uh, I didn't like the painting very much. So I put a big stroke of yellow in the sky for where the boat would be floating. And I put a stroke of yellow ochre for the light shining on my brother's back. So I worked from those two strokes of paint and I quickly made this first painting uh, called Yellow Boat in a Blue Bay 1999. The painting in this show is from 2013. I did a series of, of paintings looking down onto the yellow boat. My brother's in those paintings. He's sort of relaxed. He has a bottle of beer and his shoes are there and it's a sort of a calm feeling to the painting. Our daughters, Marsha and Lauren, have posed for me since they were very young. There is a painting in this show titled Marsha's First Week, where she is just a couple days old and I'm holding her. And there's another painting that I did just this past year, 29 years later, the big square painting with the mirror, where Marsha is sitting in a chair in front of the mirror. That painting, uh, called Marsha and Forsythia, 2020, was inspired by Fairfield Porter's painting uh, called The Mirror from 1966, which in turn was an homage to Velazquez, Las Meninas. I've painted Marcia and Lauren throughout the years that they grew up in Vaughan. There is a painting titled The Fig Tree, which is a painting of the fig tree, which is right on one side of our house. And when, when Marcia was about 14 years old, she was I had, she was sitting up on a, a wood bin, and there was a cat there, early evening light. There's another painting when she was about 16 years old. She's playing guitar, sitting up in a tree fort. That painting is called The Guitar Player. My work is, is sort of grouped in different subject matter. When it's summertime and the yellow boat is out on the beach, I like to paint the, the yellow boat. Of course, in the wintertime, the boat's out of the water, completely different mood, and so the paintings are different. It's a very somber, minimalist kind of beauty in the Northwest, and I try to capture that. The first winters that I lived here, I thought a lot about Whistler, Rothko, the work of Morris Graves, the general atmosphere of, of Morris Graves' paintings. So the winter paintings are, are very, abstract and minimalist. There's a big 10-foot diptych in this show called Snow at Vaughn. And the way I started doing the 
big diptychs was one winter I was working on a, another painting and I realized that I, I was working on a 50 by 70 inch canvas which was a, a standard landscape size for me so I had this 50 by 70 canvas set up outdoors in, in the snow and I realized I wanted to have more expanse over the water to the left so I went back to the studio and got another canvas that was 50 inches high and about 40 eight inches wide and I just set that on the ground next to the other canvas and continued the painting. So that's how I started doing these diptychs. This is a painting at my mother's house in Vaughan. It's on Bliss Cochran Road so we call it the Bliss House and when my brother was here my mother fell and broke her hip so my brother R.G. stayed all summer to help and he posed for me morning and afternoon. It has a lot of geometric shapes in it, and at a certain point, I wanted to bring the yellow boat into the picture. I wrote it down and pulled it up on the beach, and it's one of those narrative elements that's not obvious, but it's, it's a boat that you know he could get up and row off in if he wanted to. There are uh, pencil drawings in the show. Uh, Greg Robinson, the chief curator, was very interested in showing these working drawings, pencil drawings that I do as studies while I'm working on the paintings. So the drawings that are in this show relate to specific paintings. And the idea was that young people who come into the show, they get an idea of how these paintings are made. So they don't just see a lot of big oil paintings and not really see how, how the process comes about. So. The drawings are very important, and also working from life. These are, these are all done mostly all from life. So I set the paintings up outside in whatever weather conditions they are, and I prop them right up on the ground with a, a piece of one by two that's attached to the back of the painting with a little hinge. And I put the palette right on the ground, and I crouch down and like a baseball catcher, and paint right there in front of the subject and these these figure paintings are done the same way so I, I just propped the canvas on the porch and stood back and painted my brother there in the morning. I like paintings that have clean color and I would say that the subject matter of these paintings is important but what's more important is the way that they're painted so that's why I paint directly from life. If I could get the effects I wanted just using photographs and painting from those, I might do that because it's easier in some ways. But I really care about the emotional impact that someone gets looking at the paintings, just reacting to the color and the way the paint is put on the canvas. And you don't have to understand the technical background to that, but the way that the paint is sitting on the canvas and the, the history of the painting, the, the trial and error that goes into creating the painting from life and from drawings is key to the reaction that someone has when they see it. And also the scale. I like the painting large because there's an impact, an emotional impact that one gets by seeing the color and the atmosphere on a large scale. This is Greg Robinson again, and I want to thank you for watching our video. I also want to thank our exhibition sponsors and Linda Hodges Gallery in Seattle and Lou Allen Galleries in Santa Fe for their involvement and support with this exhibition.